So my inspiration for today's project comes from a previous project I did because sometimes it's good to be inspired by other things you've done and decide to take it a step further. So I was playing around with my paints and I created this flower and I want to try it again. So I'm going to show you how I'll do that today on this 8 inch by 10 inch canvas. This flower really reminds me of the Queen Anne's lace that I see when I'm looking out over the water. These are so beautiful. So first of all, I'm going to cover my canvas with this teal paint. So I'm going to give it a base layer and then I'm going to create my flowers on top of this base layer. I'm covered with the paint and I'm going to get started. So I was trying to remember how I made that flower so what I did was I went back to the video that I had created and I was able to watch the video and from that I could remember all the steps that I had followed to create the flower the first time and then I can just go and follow those steps even if I don't do it exactly the same. If I use the same approach, then hopefully it'll work out. So my lesson of the day for this video is that you, there's really something to be said for videotaping yourself as you create your art. And then if you want to repeat it, you can. You can also learn a lot from your mistakes as well. Because sometimes I find when I watch my videos, I can see how I could do something a little bit different and really improve my technique and do it better next time. So I'm going to put a dark blue there. In my, This is an open cup pour. If you wanted to learn more about open cup pouring, there's so many videos on YouTube. It's amazing. So I have five colors here that I'm going to put in to create a bunch of paint for my flowers. I think I better be careful not to put too, too much. Whoops. Now, do I leave that little white splot of paint or do I clean it up? And I'm gonna put some blue. Blue and get that bit of white out there. Just have to scrape it off. That works. Huh. Easier than you would think to fix mistakes. And I'm going to top it off with gold. Ooh, that one's starting to slide. Because I want these to be as circular as possible. paint is starting to come out from underneath, but that's just going to add to the background in the whole painting. Good amount of gold on top. All right. Another drip. Now just let that sit for a second. Oh, I've got all this interesting background stuff happening. So that, that's what I found was really good on the little one that I did that some of the paints created some good background in my flower. So now I'm going to lift these and hope that the paint stays as circular as possible. Shake that a little bit. This was where I found watching the video really helpful because I looked at how I did this particular one and I had lifted the cup straight up and I shimmied it a bit as I was lifting it. And then I got these three, now I've got these three really cool circles. And to create the stems of the flower, I have to decide how many, how many stems do I want. So I think I'm going to make seven on each one. So I go one, Three, four, five, six, 
seven. And then I draw in like this. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for the other two flowers. So cool. Now the other thing I'd like to do is ground them a bit with some stems. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue paint, some of my dark blue paint, and create a stem. Whoops, do a little line of paint. And then I can fiddle with the paint to make it look more stem-like. A little bit more blue paint there. Very abstract, but yet it's still giving the impression of flowers. So I'm thinking I might do a little bit more blue along the bottom here. And then just have some swooping up from the ground. just to ground it a little bit, but still if the thing about the paint pouring that's so cool is that it can still have all of the color that's underneath showing through. So even though it's the blue on top, I'm actually 
doing a bit of painting here with the blue and the gray teal. Grayish teal. I don't know what you would call this color, but I love the combination of the colors on my original flower. So this just gives it a little bit more grounding at the bottom of the piece. Plus I get all this blue dripping off on the bo bottom here and it creates a kind of interesting effect on the side of my canvas as well. As I'm looking at it, I'm wondering if there's something more that could be happening in the center here. So maybe I'll just try and uncover some of the paint that's underneath there. That's interesting. All right, I think I'll let that sit for a bit and see what happens to it. So I've let my flowers dry for a bit and I'm really loving them. There's so many colors that are coming through in the flowers. This flower kind of ran off the top of my canvas, but that's okay, it's still kind of pretty. So now I'm going to embellish them with sea glass. So I'm using my Quick Seal Kitchen and Bath Adhesive Caulk and I've decided I'm going to put a nice piece of aqua in the middle of each flower. And these are like those little pieces that kind of look like jelly beans. I have to be careful about using too much sea glass when I embellish these paint pours because I don't want to cover up a lot of detail in the paint. Just enough to add a bit of interest and to add a bit more dimension to the pieces. So I do like having a nice center in my flowers. And then I've picked out a whole bunch of white triangles. And I'm just going to add a little bit of detail to each petal. So I need seven of these around each one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Except for this one, because some of my petals ran off the top here, the top of my canvas, so I don't need one on each one of those. So thanks so much for joining me for this paint pour. I hope it gives you another idea of something you can do with your painting to create a bit of, bit of interest, bring the beach back into your home, and also to give yourself that chance to try something a little bit different. So until next time, I hope you make it out to the beach and happy sea glass hunting.